Hi everybody, it's Dr. Gymnatis from Cardiovascular Interventions in Orlando and this video is going to be on how to treat a heart attack and it's a continuation from my previous one where I explained what a heart attack actually is. So at the end of this video you pretty much know how we manage an acute heart attack. So just to recapitulate, we know that the more plaque in the walls of your arteries, more calcium buildup in the walls of your arteries, the greater the risk that one of these plaques somewhere along here is gonna crack. And when that plaque cracks, all of a sudden, it makes a crack in the wall, just like old wallpaper, and a blood clot starts forming in here. And if that blood clot completely seals off the artery like I've shown you here, now you have a heart attack. Heart attack is defined as complete lack of blood flow. There's nothing coming through here. So this muscle here is going to die. And typically the patient may or may not get chest pressure, shock, EKG changes showing ST elevation, and of course, the blood tests are positive. Your troponin, your troponin is gonna be positive. That's a blood test. So this patient, you can see this patient and know that the artery is completely blocked. ST elevation. This patient has basically got less than 90 minutes to make sure that this artery is opened up again. Otherwise, there's gonna be irreversible damage done to this heart muscle. This heart muscle will all be dead. And it's gonna happen if this artery is not opened up in a timely fashion. So when a patient complains of chest pain that does not go away, that could be a sign of a heart attack. It's usually in the middle of the chest. It's a pressure, it's not pain, it's a pressure. It's a heavy feeling. The patient breaks out in a sweat. Sometimes they get shortness of breath with it. They feel like the end of the world with a heaviness on their chest. And sometimes they can pass out. Blood pressure can be low. But I can tell you after 30 years of seeing patients with heart attacks, they usually describe a heaviness in their chest, throat, jaws that doesn't go away. It's not a pain. They often sweat. They break out in a sweat an unexplained sweat and they often say that they can't take a deep breath in they just feel lack of air and this continues for more than a few minutes that could be a heart attack especially if you know that you have coronary calcium in the walls of your arteries already that is why it's important to do the coronary calcium score because you may have passed your stress test, but like I said in my previous videos, you can pass your stress test. You can have a normal looking EKG, you can have a normal echocardiogram, but you can have extensive calcium in the walls of the arteries. And if you have extensive calcium, and now all of a sudden you're complaining of shortness of breath, which is unexplained, or chest pressure, that's a heart attack. So this patient will need to be emergently transferred to the emergency room and from there straight into the cath lab. So when they arrive in the ER or when the paramedics see them, they see that the EKG pattern is very typical pattern of a patient that's having what we call a STEMI, ST elevation myocardial infarction. And the way we treat this is that we go in with a wire into the artery, we go through the clot, put the wire down there, and then we slide a stent into the vessel over the wire and the stent is like a spring that squashes the clot and pushes it up into the wall and restores the lumen of the vessel. So that's what a stent angioplasty is, opening up the blockage quickly using a stent. Now before we get to that point, we give the patient aspirin, we sometimes give them heparin. Why? because you want to start dissolving this clot ahead of time. Because by the time you get into the cath lab, you may actually dissolve a substantial amount of this clot. 
and then sometimes we give them a clot buster called TPA, especially if you can't get into the cath lab in time. So sometimes the cath lab is too far away. And if you're in a peripheral hospital, they'll give you TPA, which will dissolve this blood clot. So we give the patient a small dose of a beta blocker, aspirin, sometimes we give them Plavix ahead of time, or TPA. And then the stent angioplasty is the final procedure that we'll do to eradicate this blood clot. Now, oftentimes patients don't have a full-blown STEMI, and as I've explained before, they just have unstable angina. So now their EKG shows ST depression, T-wave inversions, they have a specific pattern on that EKG. They're still having chest pain. Those patients will have a clot in them, and when we do the angiogram, you'll find that the artery is really narrow. But now that you all know from my previous lectures and this lecture, not all of this narrowing is caused by plaque. The plaque may only be this much and the rest may be all blood clot because it ruptured and increased the blockage. So in an unstable setting, what we're stenting is not just plaque, it's plaque plus blood clot. Because the day before, the patient had only a 50% blockage or a 60% blockage. But today, the patient presents with severe lack of circulation. You know it's a plaque that has ruptured, a blood clot has formed on it. That is why the best thing to do is to actually take an aspirin if you think you're having a heart attack. But becoming educated first about what causes atherosclerosis is very important. So yes, we can help with the myocardial infarction and try to limit the amount of damage, but prevention is the way to go. Prevention means preventing what? You need to know what you're preventing. If you think you're bulletproof because you passed your stress test and echocardiogram, I'm sorry, that, that, that patient is misinformed because he's missing out on an opportunity for prevention. You get a coronary calcium score also, you're also going to know that I have plaque. Therefore, I am in trouble. I need to repeat my scan again in a year or two to make sure my calcium score is not going any higher. And I need to identify every risk factor possible that's going to tell me whether my plaque is going to be stable or it's going to rupture. I need blood tests for inflammatory markers. I need to have a good stress test, of course, to make sure I'm not having arrhythmias because of my blockages. I need to review my entire dietary plan. I need to know exactly what to eat, what not to eat. I need to identify all the factors in my history, such as high blood pressure, hyperinsulinemia, obesity, obstructive sleep apnea. All these issues come together and cause plaques to become unstable and rupture. Extreme emotional stress, extreme physical stress, severe bereavement can also make plaques unstable. So we know the factors, but you need to identify which of all the patients are at highest risks. Those with the highest calcium score are at the highest risk. I repeat the calcium score every year or two years. Because if I see that the score is going higher and higher and higher, I know that you have risk factors which haven't yet been identified or treated that is giving you a higher and higher score. Today's cardiology is quite different from the cardiology of 10 years ago. So a stress test is not enough, an echocardiogram is not enough. A basic examination is not enough. Much more is needed. So I hope you found this helpful about what actually causes a heart attack and how to acutely treat a myocardial infarction and why it's important because you have 90 minutes to get that artery opened up and the artery narrowing is blood clot and plaque combined. Plaque rupture is the biggest culprit. So I hope you found this helpful. If you did, give me a thumbs, thumbs up and I'll make some more videos for you all if you sign up on my channel. Thank you.